evening, everyone. My name is Bernard Cannon. I'm the editor photographer of the website known as The Photo Pit. To my right over here, I have my friend Danny Mazeo of uh, The Threshold. We're here once again to discuss our favorite things of the Blue Ridge Rock Festival band announcements or artist announcements, however you want to look at it. Um, so as we've been doing, we try to like, you know, we've been a little inconsistent. We did like sometimes daily, sometimes every other day. You know, I blame Danny for this time of every other day. And he says I can because, you know, that's fair. <laughs> he said that yes. was fair. Oh, good. So uh, um, fair in love and war. Yes. And and I will say this. I did like the fact that we took a pause, you know, to give a, a couple of announcements to go out the door instead of having, you know, back to back, because then we'd only talk about three. But instead, we're going to talk about seven today or tonight. Yeah, it's already night. Yeah. Sorry for the lateness. You know, it's this is a good time for us, unfortunately, to uh, to have been able to do this. So we're sorry we're a little behind. So Courtney says yes, we're interrupting her fault. amazing race. She'll be all right. I hope you'll live, Courtney. You'll live. So anyway, <laughs> um, yeah. So we got seven bands we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about everything from yesterday, from March the first, that was announced. We're going to talk about everything then that was announced today, from March the second. Um, and I'm going to forewarn you, I'm going to be transparent and honest, like I always am, about some of these announcements. So Amanda, cover your ears during this time frame, and uh, <laughs> you know, and we'll. Well, I, I don't. I don't know that Amanda's going to be on long enough to hear you with your honesty and your transparency. So, so maybe we can just belabor this a little bit longer. If you want to blame me again for the late start, that's fine. Before before we know it, she'll you know she won't be hanging with us anymore, and it'll all work out. All right, uh, that's fair. Maybe. All right, I guess let's get to it. Um, because they're on March the first. Okay. So the first, and I'll be honest, I don't even remember what times that they got announced on. So I I, I know this was the morning one um, and it's been a long week already. So please bear with Danny and I and our, uh, if we seem a little bit off our game today, <laughs> today was a day. Any case, all right. So we're gonna talk about the first band. Um, first morning announcement. Um, this is a band that came out of Mississippi. Um, they've been around for a really long time. They're a rock band. Fits, I'll say it, it fits, and I'll, I'll comment on this really quick. Um, somebody made a comment today in the fan zone. This one really kind of threw me off. Because, sorry, it wasn't the fan zone. Sorry, it was on the announcement for the last band for tonight. And it really threw me off because somebody made a comment saying, is this the Blue Ridge Rock Festival or is this the Blue Ridge Metal Festival? And I kind of sat there going, well, hang on a second, people, because last year we had a ton load of metal bands that were there along with a ton load of rock bands. So... I, I don't know where that vibe came from, but yeah, for anyone who, who doesn't know, the Blue Ridge Rock Festival is not really just specifically rock. It is a mix. And this year, it is a really wide mix of stuff from all the bands that have been announced. And you'll see even with the ones we're going to discuss tonight that they're all over. So in any case, that being said, um, but this band is definitely rock and, you know, it's and they've been around a long time. They've been very successful. I will say that when they first got their stuff started. I mean, like really successful, like rock radio off the chains, number one hits galore. I mean, you couldn't like turn on the radio without hearing their very first single that went out. Um, the band I'm specifically talking about is Saving Abel. So let me give you some uh, little rundown about this because this, there's a really important part about this announcement. Uh, I have to admit, because Danny, Danny and I chat during the week and he knew my feelings about this announcement. That got me a little excited about this one. Um, they came out in 2004. Um, you know, they're out of Corinth, Mississippi. Um, their first release, if I remember correctly, was, if I can find it here, come on, thank you, um, was a self-titled album that came out in 2008. But the most important thing on that album that came out um, was the single called Addicted. And that song blew up radio charts i mean you could not you couldn't turn on the radio without ever hearing that song being played somewhere at some point in time um and then beyond that their other single that they had on it called 18 days was just was i mean that thing just also blew up the rock charts too and they were both stellar songs um and, and i tell you like i love them for that um and even so much that like addicted became into my karaoke sing list because that's how much i love that song um we, we that, don't need to replicate that tonight just on record we don't need to replicate that tonight maybe at the end maybe say, the i'll end. belt it out right now <laughs> right, anyway. go ahead you know what give us no the no no 
no, I won't. I won't submit people to that torture. Um, <laughs> any case, so let's talk about their discography really quick. Um, Saving Abel's self-title came out in 2008. They followed up with Miss America in 2010, Bringing Down the Giant in 2012. And when that happened, though, right after that, um, their lead singer, Jared Weeks, left the band. He decided that he wanted to go solo. Um, he decided he wanted to go out on his own. At that point, they had another singer known as Scott Austin who came in to fill in right around 2014. And then they had their fourth album, which is Bloodstained Revolution, that came out. And the unfortunate part is right at that point, they did nothing else studio album wise. Now, the announcement why I feel like this became such a bigger deal is that Jared Weeks is now back with the band. Scott Austin decided he was going to leave um, to go do solo work on his own, and they got Jared Weeks to come back again. So now you have, you know, the saving Abel of old that's going to be performing at the Blue Ridge Rock Festival. So I have more thoughts about Danny. I'll let you talk first. So I, I think where, where you hit the nail on the head is read the announcements. Don't just look at the band, read the announcements. Because this one caught me as well. I saw the name and then I read the announcement and I realized that the singer's back. I'm like, all right, on board, absolutely on board. And when you say that, you, you know, you couldn't turn on the radio without hearing Addicted. You couldn't turn on the radio without hearing it, but at the same time, you also found yourself singing along. I don't know that I ever got to the point of karaokeing, but it was still, you couldn't help but sing along, and it was just a fun rock record. I think their song New Tattoo was on that album, too, um, yeah. and that one, that one just, honestly, that song sold me on them from the get-go, and uh, again, that was a front-to-back Awesome debut. Love the band. I'm excited to see them back in action. Okay. Um, the one thing I about, I will say this to me about Saving Abel is that, you know, I've, I got to see them live during the fight when Jared Weeks was still around. And they were just as good on stage as I expected them to be on radio. I mean, like, you just couldn't even tell the difference in a sense, except the fact that, you know, it's a live performance. And they were great. When he left... I felt that band changed and like that vibe just wasn't there anymore. So if this was saving Abel coming without Jared Weeks, this to me would have been an uh-uh, nope, I don't care. The fact that he's back is the only reason I will admit that made me care about this. And that was it. Because I'm hoping that they get that vibe back that they had back, you know, almost 20 years ago to see them now performing again. So there's my additional two cents on that. So saving Abel. All right. Um, I'm glad to see Adrian said she was excited for it. The Adrian, you weren't alone. There was a lot of people excited for saving Abel. Oh, yeah. Okay. This one, okay. <laughs> this one's a tough pill for me. Okay, I'm going to be, this is going to be the start of my transparency. This is a tough pill for me. And and I'll, I'll explain my confliction why. All right. We're talking about here a rock band comes out of Missouri. They are... 1991 so now we're really digging back it's a rock band right so you're talking about rock singles you're talking about and i i'll put them in the fact of radio rock because there wasn't a time you couldn't turn on a rock station and not hear this band on during the 90s well i mean no joke like you without a doubt at any point in time if you were in that era and you were listening to actual radio you know this is like before streaming existed i know what this is i'm old so bear with that um you know, but I mean, it's just, they were, they were hot. They were a really hot ticket an extremely hot ticket. Um, I mean, like just as an example, their debut album sold over 5 million copies. That's five times platinum. That's a big deal for any band on a debut album. An amazing milestone. Yeah. I mean, that's amazing. There's so much. And, and I'll admit, you know, for the singles that this band released, there was so much good music that came out of this. So the band that we're talking about is Puddle of Mud. So let's talk a little bit more about their, you know, discography and stuff that they had. Um, you know, they formed together back in 1981. Their first album, like right here, was Come Clean. That came out in 2001. So it took them a while before they actually got, you know, studio debut out the door. 
But when it did, it was hot. And you couldn't stop people from singing a song, listening to songs. I mean, everybody knows, like, get, like it, you could name probably at least three songs off that album at the top of your head right now without even thinking twice about it. And right. then you could also sing along to every one of them. Yes. And that was the key thing. And that's why I kind of define it as that rock radio. That's that to me is my definition of the rock radio. It's the songs that hit, you know, you they literally hit the airwaves and the ones that they're catchy. You pick up on them right away. You listen to them, you sing them and you never think twice about them. Um, you know, but like blurry, she hates me. Um, what was the other one? I can't believe I'm missing. Um, I know there's one more and I can't think of it off the top of my head. And that's really sad because I should know this one. Um, let me see. I can see. And control. That was the other one. That was the lead. That was the lead single was, out of it. And that yeah. and that single was hot. I mean, you couldn't. I, you couldn't time. get enough of that. Yeah, and you couldn't get was, enough of that song. And, and and that one wasn't just rock radio. That was on a lot of different stations. You know, anything that had any type of reach beyond a single genre was pulling yeah. that one and playing it constantly. And I think blur and I think blurry got played even more because that really was, you know, yeah. that blended pop, rock, whatever, you know, yeah. genre there. So all right, Drift so let's talk about the rest of the stuff here. Yeah, yeah, David referenced Drift and Die, and that was another great one oh, from the album. Love that song. I really do. I mean, I love a lot of Paul Lamont song. So let me go through the rest of this. Um, 2003 was Life on Display, famous as 2007. Um, volume four, Songs in the Key and Love of Hate, Love and Hate was 2009. And then there was nothing for 10 years until 2019, Welcome to Galvania. So do you want to talk first before I go into my transparent feelings about this? You know what? I will. I okay. will. Because as much as I feel like I know your transparent feelings, I feel like I'm probably going to hear more than what I'm expecting. And that's okay. Okay. Um, so, so the first time I saw Puddle of Mud, they actually opened up a Deftones Godsmack concert um, with From Zero on the bill. So this was, okay. yeah, this was probably right at 2000, 2001. So, I mean, they're, they're hot at this point, right? And they were great. They were absolutely great. Come Clean was an awesome record. I, I loved, there was that, that Kurt Cobain sound to his voice that, you know, I think really helped just push them to that level. And after that, it was, okay, their, their albums weren't great to me, but they were good. And then, you know, for me, I think just being, being the person that I am and seeing people struggle, I hurt. I just always, that's just how I function. And especially over recent years, um, Brian already noted it on uh, in the comments. You know, Wes Stanton has the he's got demons, man, and it's it's unfortunate. He you know he he's become a you know a punchline more than a front man, and it's really unfortunate because I think you know the talent is there, the the potential is there. And so I'm hopeful that they're able to get through their set, that they're able to go and kind of bring back the early Puddle of Mud vibe when they're on stage. Definitely a band that I would see myself wanting to go by past the stage. I don't know that this is going to be a band that I'm ready to go and park my, my back in right in front of the stage for the show. I've said yes. my piece, I'll let you say yours. All right. So um, I'm going to start being a little more transparent than most than I have been with some of the band announcements. And Amanda, you may want to cover your ears with this one. And Jonathan, please don't watch this. Just skip ahead at some point. Um, here's my issue. I, I kind of have an issue with both of these bands. But I want to start with Puddle of Mud first. With, when I say both these bands, I mean Saving Able and Puddle of Mud. So Puddle of Mud, number one, um, I've seen Wes at his best. I've also seen Wes at his worst. And I understand that the guy has demons. I understand he has problems. I understand there's a lot of artists that do. But there are artists who have these demons and find ways to pull it together and continue on. Now, that's no knock necessarily to him. You know, some people struggle more than most. I get it. But maybe this just isn't the life for him in that case. And maybe that was just the kind of, you know, if you can't keep it together, maybe it's just not time to do it. 
But instead, what I see is this band that is constantly trying to relive the lifestyle of what they once had. And I don't think they're successful at it. And that's that's kind of like my concern. Like, and and everyone who's watching who's seen this will get it as soon as I talk about it. They recently did a cover tune of a Nirvana song. And Wes, I think, was trying to mimic that Kurt Cobain singing style. And it got nothing but trashed upon for days. I mean, I have to admit, it was bad. It just wasn't good. So to see them on this lineup, just... I under, I'll say this. I understand that there are a lot of fans who are excited about saving a puddle of mud. My honest feeling was that these announcements devalued the Blue Ridge Rock Festival brand. I just don't think they belong here, my personal opinion. Um, and that's not even saying as a media perspective, that's saying as a fan. I just couldn't understand the reason why they're here. Now, with that said, Saving Able, I think, is a very different story because they may be kind of re-coming back around again, trying to rebuild what they once had. You know, But as you can see, like they haven't had an album out since 2014. So, and even though like they were performing at, you know, events and, you know, still touring in a sense, you know, with Scott at the time, I just, you know, will they bring it back to have that special moment? They might. And Blue Ridge could be the start of that. Hands down, they may knock it out of the park. And I think I'm less concerned about them than I am with Paul Lamont. I'm afraid Paul Lamont is going to be a disaster when they hit the stage. I just do. And I could be wrong. And if anyone who has seen them live recently, tell me outright if I'm wrong about this. But that's my feeling with this. I just don't understand that ad at all, period. So I said my piece. <laughs> so, so. so what I would say to that is to, to Wes and to the band, should you happen to watch our video with our 17 current viewers, which would be amazing, um, take this as a challenge blow the roof off this thing so i i will say this so brian here is saying you know you know control drift and die blurry spaceship chase me these have it yes brian i'll say those songs were great back in the 90s and are they still great sure can they play them just as good as they did back then that's that's the challenge of this and that's why i'm a little concerned about this pick being on this lineup so for those who've never seen them and you believe in them, go see the set. I, I kind of agree with, you know, with Danny on this one. I don't think I will do so. That's my opinion. But who knows? You know, maybe they'll release something prior to the festival and blow my mind away. And if they do, great. I will absolutely wholeheartedly give them a, a second chance at that. But like I said, I've seen Wes at his best and at his worst, and his worst isn't pretty. And I'm hoping that doesn't happen at, uh, at that piece. So, all right. Anyway, moving so, on. <laughs> yeah, moving on. All right. Um, this was now the last announcement from yesterday. Um, so now we went into a little bit of the heavy, heavier than the other two bands that they announced prior on that day. Um, yes. This is a band out of San Antonio, Texas, band that came out um, in 2005. Um, I will say here that their second studio album, when it did come out, debuted at 105 on the Billboard 200 back in 2012. That's some pretty solid. Uh, Solid pieces. Yep. And uh, uh oh, I'm going to let Amanda in just so you're aware because she's probably going to yell at me now. That's okay. um, <laughs> in we, 2005 we, we, we or welcome. 2012. You're welcome. Uh, yeah. So, and then their next album that came out right after um, debuted at number 39 on the Billboard 200. I mean, you talk about a band that can pull that off, you know, two in the top 200, two albums in a row. It's pretty solid to me. It, it, um, it absolutely is. Yeah. And I think this particular band, I love the pick because it is delving once again into that metalcore, hard and heavy stuff that a lot of people want to hear. The band we're talking about here is Upon a Burning Body. And I will say when I saw this announcement come through, I was like, okay, I'm game. And I saw the fan reaction to it and people were stoked they for them. Were, they absolutely were absolutely stoked. Them. Yeah, absolutely stoked. So um, let me go through the discography real quick. So uh, their debut album came out in 2010. That was known as The World Is Ours. Um, Red, White, and by the way, that debut album hit the Heat Seeker for Billboard at number 28. Not a bad start for your debut yeah. album. Red, White, and Green came out in 2012. Um, that album, believe it or not, hit the number one peak at the U.S. Heat Seekers on the Billboard charts. So, you know, That's once awesome. again, 
here's yeah here's a band that fans absolutely love the music they were stoked for it and it's you know it generated heat excuse the pun um the world is my enemy now is 2014 straight from the barrio is 2016 and then their most recent album was in 2019 that's called southern hostility um and those are the full studio albums for the extended plays eps in 2005 they had genocide and then their most recent any work that they had out was from 2020 they had an ep called built from war so i like this i love well, i'm gonna tell you like i love this pick I love this addition to the rock festival. I think it's going to, it's, they're showing like the heavier side of things, which a lot of people ask for. So yeah, I'm absolutely game on them. What do you got, Danny? This is a band I am, I'm so pumped for plain and simple. This is a band I have not seen yet. It's a band that I have wanted to see for a long time. And so, yeah, I'm, Front and center, bring it on. I'm I'm absolutely pumped for this one. Awesome. All right. I am too. Hello, Amanda. Welcome. Amanda, thank Hello, you. Hello, boys. Are you going to ready to yell at me now? Hello, boys. No, I didn't come to yell. I come to uh, talk about a point of burning body. Like, I, oh, I love these guys so much. I've seen them before. <sighs> it's going to be great. <laughs> it's going to be great. I'm telling you, they kill it every single time I've seen them live. Good. I'm excited. I haven't seen them yet, so I'm excited for this one. I love this one. But now yeah, I'm sure awesome. my, you know, my own opinion has probably kicked me out of getting to the festival. So you know, it's all good. No, why would that? Like it, you have an opinion. It is what it is. But yeah, I just, yeah, I mean, it's just, I don't know. I'm gonna leave that alone. You know, we'll we'll move forward. But yeah, upon a broken body, I think is great. Yeah, I love it. I think though that Wes is in recovery. So, I mean, that's really is, good. I'm you know sure. what I mean? So when yeah. when people deal with stuff like that, it's it's difficult to overcome, but hopefully, you know, he's on the right path and stuff like that again. I hope so too. I mean, it's just, I, I would, uh, I'll, let me put it this way. I wish them no ill will. I just hope that they can do it to the best of their ability and perform and entertain because the, people are cold and cruel. Okay. We know yeah. this, this is right. The last thing I would want to see happen to this band is they get on the stage and get booed. Yeah, that's true. Right. Yeah. I that's don't want to see that happen because then what, you know, what would happen right after that? <clears throat> the entire fan zone would be blowing up with people going, see, I told you so. See, look, it was a mess. It was such a train wreck. And then there'd be memes for day. And it's like, I just don't want that. I don't. I yeah. don't want to see it. I hear you. Know? you. Yeah. So I, I, I will say this real quick, just because again, I'm, this is what I do. So He's in recovery is, is what I'm hearing. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, between you guys saying that a couple of people corroborated on that one in the comments here, there is, there, there's been a few posts uh, in the fan zone from others that are in recovery for their own various demons. And there, there are people coordinating opportunities to have meetings on site to be able That's to look awesome. each other up. And seeing that, I think, is just, it's, it's awesome. It's it awesome. Community, you see the community coming together to do what our community is supposed to do. And that's be there for each other, to help each other when we're down. And so, you know, for anybody that is struggling and says, I, I can't put myself in a festival, I just can't. There are others that are like that as well. And so not to push anybody necessarily out of their comfort zone, but know that there are others that are looking <clears throat> for that group to be able to go enjoy the festival, do it safely and, and within their boundaries, not everybody else's. Which That's is awesome because like shows and festivals, like that can be such a big trigger for people, honestly. Yeah. I mean, because yeah. the whole, like the vibe is, you know, everybody drinks and we have fun and stuff like that. And if you're in recovery, like it's the last it's thing you right want. there, right? It's right there in your face. In your so. face, yeah. Yep, I yeah, I completely agree with you. You know, and if if anyone can, if anyone who's watching knows anyone who actually you know was one of the people who started you know moving this to the fan zone, please tell them from at least for me, you know, from us as a whole, kudos to them and thank you for doing that because I love yeah. love that idea. Absolutely. Because you know, it is. I mean, it's, oh, it's a tough, it's a tough situation for that. You know, it's just, 
you know, it's, it's hard for one enough to even deal with that. But then number two, you're going to say, I'm going to go to this festival and I know my demons are going to be around me 24 mm-hmm. seven and I'm struggling. And you really sometimes don't have anywhere to go, especially if you're camping, you know, I mean, I know with the campers, you know, we're like, oh, they're wild. Campers were like last they're year. Wild. Yeah, they party. <laughs> so, you know, I get it. You know, I get it. Anyway. So, um, let's talk about today's announcements. And, let's uh, do and actually, that. Hang on one second. I'm going to put myself on mute for uh. <laughs> that's fantastic so before we go ahead into today's announcements and while bernard is communicating uh on mute beautifully at that <laughs> um I, I was surprised with the announcement last night i was not expecting that um so it was really it was really cool to have to, Maybe I'm old and just went to bed early. I really don't know what time the announcement even dropped. But oh, dude, it was like 11 p.m. Yeah, I was surprised it was as well. It was late. All right, so I'm I'm old. My apologies. Uh, mm-hmm. But when I woke up this morning and that was the first thing that was just blasted across my phone, I was freaking hyped up. Surprise. <laughs> yes. So well done. Well done on that one. So, all right, sorry, I was uh, telling a kid who's over there that he's supposed to get in the shower. So I know, I, I'm so, like, the reason I was hesitant to join is because I have my three-year-old here, and at any moment, he might wake up and be, like, vicious. So, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> he's, he's con- mine, mine's a teenager, but he's concerned that, you know, the shower is going to be here on the live stream. I was like, don't worry about it, just go. We'll just be background <laughs> white noise then. Um, it's all good. It's all good. Anyway. All right, let's move on to today's announcement. So first one we got, you know, I, I will say this, today started off pretty good with with this. Um, we had, let's see, a band from Troy, Michigan, once again in the metalcore genre, one of Amanda's favorites. Um, they formed in 2005. Um, they have had a number of albums that out. Unfortunately, very unfortunately, um, this band suffered tragedy and their lead vocalist had passed away and had to get, you know, now someone else to come in and kind of pick up the reins to do so. And that vocalist who did stepped up and hot damn, they step up well, you yeah. know, to keep the vibe of this band alive. And this was a band that for the longest time I was dying to see. I got to see them last year and photograph their set. Um, and I was so excited for them and they were so fantastic. So I can't even tell you how excited I am to see them come back again. Um, the band that we're talking about is We Came as Romans. Hell yeah, Blue Ridge. Thank you so, for bringing them back. So stoked. Yeah, and the, so stoked. the the singer that you're talking, Kyle, he unfortunately yep. passed away from an overdose, which again yeah. goes back to what we were just talking about. You know, this industry is just yep. tough and people deal with stuff just like the normies like you and I do. But um, I was very fearful because I grew up with these guys. So um, I really enjoyed them. I was fearful that that would be the end. And so Me to too. see them come back the way that yeah. they did and still be sustaining is incredible. Absolutely. They're um, just as I, good I, as ever. Yeah. I, I was, I was just stoked. I was just absolutely stoked. Um, so let's talk about um, albums. So here we had um, 2009 was their actual first release. The, the album was called to plant a seed. And uh, that just went through their 10 year anniversary in 2019. They did a special, I think they did a special tour on that one too. I think they played that entire album from cover to cover. Um, debut album off the bat hit the US Billboard 200 at 175, just so people are aware. Like I like I always said, like people may think, like, yeah, what's the big deal about the Billboard charts? Um, Billboard charts are tracking <laughs> sales. So the fact that any band on its debut can hit that 200 chart with the thousands of artists that are out there in the US today is damn impressive as far as I'm concerned. Yep. So, uh, let's see here. Then 2011, Understanding What We've Grown to Be. That actually made it to number 21 on the Billboard 200. Uh, Both 20- those albums were so good. Yeah, they were so good. Right, 2013, <laughs> Tracing <laughs> Back Roots. If at any point somebody wants to start interjecting that rock is dead, they are just damn wrong. Yeah, yeah. wrong. No, they're damn <laughs> wrong. Alive and well. Yeah, well, alive and well. Alive and well. Uh, let's see here. So 2013, Tracing Back Roots, that hit number eight in its peak on the Billboard 200. Uh, 2015 was their was their self-titled album. That made it to number 11 on the Billboard 200. And then um, and they were under the label of Equal Vision throughout those four albums. They ended up then re-signing with Sharp Tone or signed with Sharp Tone in 20, 
2017 or 16, the album Cold Like War came out in 2017, and that was their last one. And that even made it to number 61 on the Billboard 200, you know, to start. Um, but they still, even from then, that they've had a lot of singles that came out. I'm still waiting for another album to drop, and I'm not heard word of it. Dark Bloom, that was in 2021, that dropped. That song is awesome. Uh, Black Hole, that featured Caleb from Beartooth. And then Daggers that featured 0936. I mean, and these are all stellar singles. And I'm like, oh, where's the damn album? <laughs> That's what I'm waiting on. Like, what the hell? But yeah, I mean, this this band, I can't speak enough about them. They're great. They're so good. So, so good. So good. Danny. I respect your passion. It's hard, it's hard to follow up. You know, it, again, it, this, this is really? one of the, I, I unfortunately did not get to see their set last year so when this announcement dropped you know I, I was I was doing my fanboy dancing at the house and you know <laughs> and I'm okay with that right I'm people could judge me if they want but thankfully I'm at the house and nobody could judge me <laughs> it's great so instead I'm publicly sharing my fanboy moment about this because I heard their set last year was just incredible and it's it could not be more obvious that they have that momentum building still. They're not riding off of it. They are building off of it. And, and there's a lot to be said. <laughs> so to have an opportunity to see them this year and make up for what I couldn't last year is just out friggin' standing. Yeah, I couldn't see them last year either. I saw them um, on Warp Tour with Kyle. I haven't seen them since they had the new singer. So I'm incredibly stoked to see them if I get the chance to. Yeah, they were, they were just, they were just fantastic. I mean, it's, you know, you and, and they put them on, yeah, I, I photoed that set. I was no way I was missing that set last year <laughs> nice. and they were fantastic. They put them on the, on the main stage. They were on the monster stage mm -hmm. yeah. and it was like, yeah. holy crap. They were great. They were absolutely great. Loved them. Absolutely loved them. Um, by the way, um, Danny, Christina says, I can't judge your fanboy dance without seeing it. Are you on TikTok? Do it right now. You won't. You nope. won't. Nope. You won't. Nope. You guys want my cash app? I mean, I, I could certainly be <laughs> you want. Ah. Not above that. Love it. Love it. All right. Moving on. Oh, my God. All right. Now, so the next one. Okay. Amanda, I got I to gotta, I gotta gripe about something for a second. What is up with the hints that seem to have no relation to the bands that are being? <laughs> I have no clue. I, I addressed okay. it earlier. I was like, what is going on in here? I have right. not honestly been able to pay as much attention to the fan zone as I normally would because we're actively announcing and things like that. So I don't know. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. All right, next band. Um, this band comes out of Chicopee, Massachusetts. So we're Northerners. Once again, another metalcore. So you could see the vibe that was running here this, you know, for today. Um, they formed in 2001. So you know, we're talking about a 20 year old band and a 20 year old band that's still hot as far as I'm concerned. Um, they have 10 albums. And I think when this band hits, when they get to the stage, <clears throat> I pray that the stage is going to be big enough to handle the mush that's going to follow <laughs> behind it. And it, the band we're talking about here is, if I pronounce it correctly, the Acacia Stain or Strain. Sorry, the Acacia Strain. And I was just like, wow, like this is fantastic. I, I mean, seriously, this is fantastic. Um, let me talk about quickly their 10 albums that they have released, studio albums. Um, their debut came out. In 20, I mean, yeah. they're just back to back to back. They are. Yeah. I mean, they seriously are. So, um, they remember they formed in 2001 their first album came out in, in 2002 so and that was called and life is very long in uh 2004 they then released 3750 um it took them until their third album though before they really started charting and that was called the dead walk in 2006 and that made it on the heat seeker at number 40 when it's peak the next album right behind that though in 2008 was called continent and that peaked at number two on the u.s heat seeker charts and it hit 107 on the billboard 200 it took them a little while to get some, you know, movement going, but fans got to them. And when they got to them, they held on. Uh, 2010 was Wormwood. In 2012 was Death is Only Mortal. In 2014 was Coma Witch. That was, as far as I can tell here, their highest charting 
album on the Billboard 200 that hit made it to number 31. Uh, Grave Bloom came out in 2017. Then it was it comes in waves in 2019, and then their most recent was Slow Decay. They came out in 2020. Now beyond that, they also had three EPs that they did: uh, Money for Nothing in 2013, Above Below in the same year. And then it, this was, a, I guess they define these as like, do you ever see these dual EPs with multiple artists on the same EP? Um, this one was called The Depression Sessions. That was also with Thy Artist Murder and Fit for an Autopsy. So that's their total, uh, the total discography from top to bottom. And uh, yeah, you, you could not have added a heavier band than these guys for, this, for the Blue Ridge Rock Festival. Good pick. I think the, the, the think? only thing that I can possibly add to this is Pit Crew. If anybody out there is listening or Cogs of War, everybody just get ready because it's going to be absolutely insane. And I, I can't wait for it. Yep. Where, where are these guys on your list, Amanda? Uh, too heavy for me, but really? That's interesting. Yeah, I, I, I'm just. Um, I don't know. Yeah, they're a bit heavy for me, but they're fine, honestly. Yeah. I don't mind them. Yeah. I appreciate I mean, they, it. Yeah, that's cool. I, I think it's because even though like they're listed as, you know, from the information I find, they're listed as metalcore, they're probably really uh, metalcore. You know, exactly. And yeah. I, I will be the first to say this. Sometimes there are artists or bands that I just don't give like a fair chance to. I hear about them a lot, but I don't. I'll listen to like one or two songs and be like, eh, not for me. Um, and then I continue to listen and I actually really dig them. And that's probably the case with this band, to be totally honest with you. Um, I seem to just kind of be stuck in my ways and listen to like the same things all the time. <laughs> so. Bad flower and metalcore. I get it. Yeah, yeah exactly. You've got <laughs> me pegged. <laughs> hilarious. All right. Well, um, in your next time, I would definitely add them to rotation, Amanda. I will. I will for sure. Yeah. I, I need to listen to more. Of their and, stuff you know, there's been a lot of bands, honestly, that I've seen on the lineup that I'm like, Oh, I've never really heard of them. And then I go to Spotify and I'm like, wow, how have I not heard of them? Yep. So this might be one of those. All right. All right. Uh, this was the third announcement that came out. This was supposed to be the last announcement of the night, by the way. Um, if you're for those paint, you know, keeping school. Um, this is a hardcore band out of LA. They formed in 2002. Um, they have seven studio albums out. And I'd say, when well, you want to talk about, like, we keep talking about, like, referring to the mosh pits. I think this is a band that's going to drive the mosh pits heavy, oh, yeah. like really heavy. Um, the band that I'm referring to here is known as Terror. So they're in their 20th anniversary for this year, um, you know, playing at Blue Ridge, I think is awesome. You know, I love bands that have, you know, anniversary celebrations, especially when they come to festivals because then they're really special. So um, let's quickly talk about their discography. So they formed in 2002. Their first album came out in 2004. It was known as One with the Underdogs. And you had 2006 with Always the Hard Way. 2008 um, was The Damned, The Shamed. 2010 was Keepers of Faith. 2013, Live by the Code. 2015, The 25th Hour. 2018 total retaliation and just last year um their most recent album is uh trapped in a world that they released um they also on top of that have and this was shocking to me five live albums um in 2003 was life and death 2006 the living proof um 2008 <laughs> this is a long title it was cbgb OMFUG Masters, live from June 10th, 2004, The Bowery Collection. That's the actual title of the album. Um, 2010 was No Regrets, No Shame. And then 2014, they had a live in Seattle album. So they, uh, yeah, they even they even have a compilation album that's called Forever Crossing the Line. And they actually have one, two, three, four, five, six EPs that they've done. You think these guys put out enough content? Um 2003, Lowest of the Low. 2007, Rhythm Against the Chaos. Among, sorry, Rhythm Amongst the Chaos. 2010 was Keepers of the Faith. That was actually also a seven-inch vinyl single. Uh, 2012, Hard Lessons, Only the Devil Knows. 2017, The Walls Will Fall. And 2020, Sink to the Hell. So there's your, you know, 
my gosh, can we put out more content in 20 years? Like a lot of bands don't do what they've done. So yeah, I I will honestly say I have not heard enough of Terror to say that I can make an opinion on them. But honestly, Same. I really do love this edition because I've heard enough about them to know they're going to put on a show. So the only thing I would add, I have a tough time listening to their recorded stuff. And that's, it's just not my go-to. Okay. But seeing them live is a whole different level. I saw them open. I was telling Bernard before we really kicked tonight off that I had first seen them shortly after they came out. And I saw them open up for Hate Breed and their energy on stage. I mean, this is why they keep putting out content and this is why they keep hitting the tour circuits. And this is, this is going to be absolutely nuts. So I, I'm locked in for them. I'm all, all right. in. For them. Awesome. Amanda, do you know them or listen to any of their stuff? Um, no, I really don't listen to them at all. Like I, they seem very angry, which is cool. <laughs> I listened to them a little the other day and I was like, okay, well, people will like them. That's cool. And that's what's cool about it. Like I said, like I just have different, you know, tastes than other people and people are really, really stoked about this. So that's cool. I love it. Yeah. Like hate breed, for example, I, I've just never really dug them. I've never really, I know you're rolling your eyes. I know, I know. But I just, I can't do it. You know what I mean? I've tried. No, it's fine. Uh, yeah. Fine. So for the people that are excited, it's amazing. Like we're, people for a while were like, uh, you know, add heavier bands and blah, 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 do this, do that. That's what's happening. So, and they're super excited about it. I love to see it. Yep, I do too. I do you're, as well. All right. You're not alone was- by, by feeling the, the anger, apparently, Amanda. I'm, I'm just I'm gonna- glancing through some of the comments here and, <laughs> Megan who is full of rage and <laughs> I feel that I absolutely feel that and I relate so I mean maybe again that's, maybe that's why I dig them particularly too. <laughs> again maybe this is a band that I just haven't really given a chance before and I just need to yeah. like listen to a couple of more songs and I'll dig them you know what I mean yep Chris Chris Christina's Christina comments, so she is going to rage like a rabid baby dinosaur. So um, <laughs> that's funny. Now, Christina, going back to your earlier commentary, uh, if you're on TikTok and you happen to have a video of that, we will be more than happy to share that <laughs> for you. Look, that's but hilarious. again, I think like we've talked about this so many times. I feel like we're beating a dead horse, but like this is why I really like the individual artist announcements because exactly. I, I, am able to actually check out the bands that like I'm like they just weren't on my radar you know what I mean yeah and these guys weren't so now I'll they do are. that this week and and I might like them yeah yeah you might and that's okay and if you don't that's okay too right because there's going to be five stages worth of music for people to come and go as they please to whatever they want to go see yeah and that's a exactly see see what exactly. suits you though I always I will say with a festival I always do challenge people go see someone you've never seen yeah, you know, for if, sure. you're, if you're just seeing the same bands you're seeing over and over again, you I mean you could do that anytime when they come on tour, right? The festival, it's like go find new music, go find new artists you've never seen before and go see them too. Yeah, you challenge yourself to do that. I did that a lot at Blue Ridge. I went and shot bands I hadn't ever seen or heard before. So that's why that was I, that's why I adore the rising acts. They have yeah. so much talent. You know what I mean? I adore yes. watching these guys. Yes. And uh, yeah, and let me give you the perfect example before we get into the last announcement for today. The one, the band that I had never seen nor shot that, you know, and I never listened to regularly. And I only heard like maybe an, a song or two just to listen to what they were like. That blew my mind away last year, The Ghost Inside. Yeah. And I, I was I've like, been, you have mentioned, oh my God. I, I want to say on every one of these live streams and, and, and there's absolutely good reason why. Yeah, I was like, not I do nothing about talent, them. but nothing. <clears throat> point. They're Those phenomenal. They're phenomenal. Yeah, they are. They are like, phenomenal, I, but but just to overcome the things that they have, like the bus accident too. and things like that. Yeah. Oh my god, you know what I mean? Like their drummer literally lost a leg, and yeah. they're still going. He was like, "Whatever, I'll adapt. I'll overcome. This doesn't define me. I'm not stopping." That to me, ah, oh, I love it. 
Yeah. And just say, and it was like the, but this is the thing, like that whole, you know, go see someone you've never seen go. And like I said, I went up based on the fan zone of everyone said like, oh, you will love this band. You will love them. I was like, I'm going to go photo them because I'm not going to miss this opportunity because it's not like they're touring regularly anyway. No regrets right. whatsoever. Yeah. I that, imagine that, that those were really, really good photos. Oh, whew, I, I, I actually, yeah. I actually got to catch that set and it was phenomenal. Yeah, it was. Speaking of phenomenal. Let's finish off the day with Ooh, the announcement wee. that came through at 9 p.m. And I was like, what? I will say once again, whoever threw the hint on this one, somebody needs to explain it to me because I had no idea what that meant based on what got posted in this band. So, in any case. Aiden, um, I think that was you, buddy. Yeah, Aiden. What's up with that? Um, anyway, so um, let's see. We're saying, once again, the metalcore genre. Um, this is our if i'm if i'm correct our third that's been announced our third international band that's coming yeah. they're from our Born friend, in 2003 australia. from australia no it's not parkway drive stop asking um <laughs> <laughs> anyway <laughs> anyway um i've known this band and i I, I'd have to like dig through my photos. I think I photographed them once before too, but oh, I love, love, love. And their most recent single, I am so killer for. And it just like yeah. it grabs me so much. Um, and that's called Soak Me in Bleach. I just love that song. Any case, the band that we're talking about that was announced tonight at nine o'clock was the Amity Affliction. And uh, yeah, Blue Ridge, hell yeah to this. So, so Amanda, correct me if I'm wrong. This is a band that was asked for like multiple times that they just never been able to get up to the festival. Constantly. Right. Yes. Yeah, Last year so. was a really big one. And it was like, they just couldn't get like, as we've talked about, Australia was just so locked down that, you know, Parkway Drive, Amity Affliction, yep. like they couldn't go anywhere. You know what I mean? They couldn't do tours at all. So um, to have them is Huge. very incredible. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is awesome. I love it, love it, love it. So, um, studio albums that this band has dropped is seven, um, Severed Ties in two thousand and eight, Young Bloods in two thousand and ten, Chasing Ghosts two thousand and twelve, uh, Let the Ocean Take Me in twenty fourteen. This could be Heartbreak in twenty sixteen, Misery in twenty eighteen. Great album, by the way. If you haven't listened to it, go do that. And uh, Everyone Loves You Once You Leave Them. That's a horrible title. <laughs> Everyone Loves You Once You Leave Them, and that was in twenty twenty. Um, but if you haven't heard anything like from them, uh, go find the single Soak Me in Bleach. And I think oh that will give you a good, a good, a really good vibe for what they're like. And I love it. I love that single so much. Anytime that comes too. through my stream, I'm cranking it all the time. Yeah, same. Yeah. Um, yeah. Drag Me too. Oh my God. Yes. Like they, yeah. I, so we talked a little bit about like mental health and stuff like that. And I had lost my fiance. This band single-handedly got me through some very, very, very tough times. I have such a special place for them in my heart. Um, their musicianship is just phenomenal. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. What do you got, Danny? What else can I say? I've already, like, fist-pumped on this one. I <laughs> was not expecting this. I was not expecting the band, I was not expecting a 9 p.m. announcement. I was not expecting a power punch of an announcement after what I felt was already a very strong day. So we're, we're ending on a very high note here for me. Yep. Oh, I agree. Absolutely. I, I think that was, you know, this was the way to finish off the day, um, you know, to get, you want to get people excited and leave them wanting more. That was the band. Yes, absolutely do that. Yeah, I I didn't see anyone that was disappointed. Would Amity? Anyone, no, yeah, no. yeah, I didn't see anyone. Like everyone was like, "Oh my god!" I I'm can't pretty sure wait that, to that see Todd them. was out trying to remove people from the fan zone if they were trying to gripe about this band, and yeah. if he wasn't, he probably. <laughs> that. How can you gripe about them though? For real, exactly. I mean, they're they're yeah. amazing, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, they're not going to be everyone's cup of tea. I completely get that. It's just, you know, but I, I think in general for people who like this style of music, like, you know, that would be me, they, that's they you, Amanda, that's Danny. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. they pull together they, that that style so well. For sure. They're honestly at the top right now in that subgenre. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. they're just, 
I cannot say enough about this band. I love them. So I was so excited when I saw that they were on the lineup. I was, yeah, I was stoked, stoked, completely stoked for this. Like, I love so, it. And I love it. Again, like we've talked about, like, I love to see people so excited. It's yeah, so I mean, validating. You know it, what I mean? Yeah. It's yes. Huge. For you guys, yeah. I haven't seen the lineup, so I can't talk about it. <laughs> I can't say. No, that's not a hint. Do not send it to me. Please don't. No. <laughs> no. No. Because you know why? Because I'm enjoying these surprises. Well, maybe not Mondays, but I'm enjoying, maybe not Tuesday, but I'm enjoying <laughs> these surprises. <laughs> You know, I love I love these one off announcements. You can't you know, every once in a while you still gotta be able to smile when you get the grandma sweater at Christmas time. Okay. Just yes. <laughs> if, if, if that's what this is becoming for you, you're you're not gonna love all of your presents. Look, Bernard, you just love most of them. Just know wear it and shut up. Just that's wear exactly it and shut right. up. <laughs> exactly no. right. Can I return it? Can I send that one back? Make grandma oh. happy. She worked very hard on that sweater. <laughs> Nah, I'm I'm good. It's all good. It's all good. So, um, I think those that are they're going to be a lot of fun, though. Yeah. Oh, Amity's gonna Amity's gonna rock. My this is this is gonna be my fear, you know. Once again, with all the bands that come out, is how you know am I gonna get the opportunity to catch as many of these as I can, right? And I know I'm gonna have to you know sacrifice one for something else because of something that I want to do. So, you know, it is the way it is. That's all. It's fine. No problem. Don't disappoint grandma. I'll try not to. No <laughs> just for just photographer problems. That's always photographer problems. <laughs> you know, I mean, I told you last year, like my goal would have been like, could I shoot every single band at the fest? Would that even be feasible? Which is do? wild. Yeah. Like, why would you even set that as a goal? Why not? Because that's insane. How can you do that? So is, you know so how it, you know what? I will be I'll be honest. You know what? We're doing this. <laughs> no, no, let me be honest for a second. It it would have been doable if if like I had gotten like festival permission to be able to jump into the pit at any time, no matter when it was in the set, I could have I could have pulled it off. I'd have been running from like stage to stage and dying, especially down at the Stalid Hill. Oh my god. Yeah. Hill, you know, but I mean it would have been feasible so just that because of our you know, because of the restrictions of two, three you know, songs three only, same. yeah. I mean, honestly, with the with the <laughs> rising talent band, security didn't seem to care when people popped in or out. Um, with the bigger bands, they did. With the national yeah. artists, they cared. You know, they were more yeah. strict about those. You know, and except for Sabaton, who let us shoot the whole set, which I think was friggin' awesome. Thank you, Sabaton, for that. We appreciated that a lot because they were great. Um, you know, but I mean, that's, I mean, it would have been doable. I mean, it's not like it's not doable. It's just, you know. But now, you know, at the VIR, five stages, you know, two side by side. I'm just saying it's doable. You know, it could be doable <laughs> if I had a permission, maybe to no, pull so that really off. Like an every airplane, van. Con- you know, like at the airport, you get the conveyor belt for luggage. I wonder if we could yeah. just do that for photographers, <laughs> like between the stages. And that way, I mean, you just get your shots while you can and <laughs> circle you know, around. You know, they 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 do. What is it? I think it's at Hellfest in France that they literally have like a queue of like the photographers and like send them in and they give them because there's so many of them out there. Like, I think I've heard the way they do this with some of those bands that they give them like a minute and a half to shoot and then kick them out. Oh, and you're talking about like 120 photographers. Like we may have had 40 at Blue Ridge. Yeah. No, that's yeah. That's nuts. So a zip line. That's funny. Yeah. How many bands did you guys get to um, photograph last year that you wanted to? Me? I can tell you, if you want to bear with me a second, I'll give you my count. Um, just gotta go find my files because I separate them by artist. All right. So let's pull see. up that many... flower, bestie. You won't. <laughs> while he, while he, while he's pulling his data, <laughs> I was not media last year. I was a volunteer. I was a runner and kind of did a whole bunch of different odds and ends for the festival. So and missed... it was very much appreciated. Well, I, I appreciate that. So I'm, I'm hopeful that I will be there with a the camera this year um among any other odds and ends that i can be of service to blue ridge so either way i'm ecstatic to just be there with the live music and then i'll just have to nudge bernard six months afterwards and see if he'll send me some pictures of my favorite sets look i've been doing that for 
six months at this point and he's stop still it. Won't do it. Stop. Bernard, don't you lie stop. to the people right now. We're no, I'm not lying. I'm just saying stop. I, I still don't have the bad flower pictures. What? Whatever. <laughs> the answer is 44. <clears throat> well, that's year. not terrible. Honestly. That's, no, it's not. No, that's a and lot I of shot, fans. I shot two full sets. No, I'm sorry. I shot three full sets for rising talent artists. So that's, that's awesome. that took time. That took time away, you know, from what I could have done. So yeah, I'm, I could have done more. I'm but I shot three, thing. You three know, sets. Just talking about shooting uh, rising talent, uh, it actually reminds me of a, a recent fan zone post. So for, for our viewers, uh, whether you're watching live or you decide you're going to come back and watch this, look on the fan zone for the love post. There is a recent post of proposals. Apparently there was a number of proposals at Blue Ridge last year. And there was one in particular that jumped out for me. And uh, Bernard, I believe, may have actually been able to take some photos. I videoed of, that. I caught that on video, that one. That's amazing. So do you, do you want to talk about that for a second? That was a, just, yeah, that was the band. That was the band Misty Eyed. That was the band Misty Eyed out of Georgia. And they're so nice. Such and great you, people. And they're you good, interviewed solid them, rock. didn't you? Yes. Yeah. Um, for those, yeah, for those of you who don't know, last year, after the full, yeah, it was after the full lineup dropped. Um, I, I, out of my absolute insanity, because I don't know what in the world made me think to do this, you know, like much like the same, what in the world made me think, <laughs> let me start a live stream series to talk about once, Blue Ridge. Once a week, we'll be fine, right? Right. So yeah, I'll be fine. <laughs> I, I, because a lot of the rising talent bands are part of the fan zone, so I just threw out there and said, hey. You know, if any of the rising talent bands would be interested in doing interviews so we can get our fan zone fans to get to know you better, hit me up over on my Facebook page for the photo pit and let's talk. Next thing I know, I had like, I think it was like 19 interviews scheduled. I was about to say, you were like, probably inundated, but I, I wasn't like, inundated. I, I didn't love... get to everyone I wanted to, to get to either. That was the right. crazy part. I because love there were that some the rising couldn't... bands, I love Ooh. that the rising bands are so like involved like that yeah it's 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 really cool it was crazy and um the cool thing about it was that i got to learn a lot about music from bands i have never heard of misty eyed was like one awesome ray ray um who else was on there <laughs> um who else am i missing here Gravebound, those guys are great yeah um fate destroyed i mean they they put an impact and fate destroyed for those who haven't seen they've been they've been oh, making the great. rounds yeah, yeah they were like been going on recent tours they came out this way to rebel rock when that one day of the festival um actually happened they were there so i got to see them again um they're back they're coming back on tour again they're going to be back in orlando on on the same night as earth day birthday but they're playing a night show i forgot the band who are they touring with this is gonna bother me now and i can't remember who they're touring with it's um living dead girl the canadian band so they're touring apparently with Living Dead Girl. They're going to be Living Dead Girl is going to be at our one day festival in Orlando in April called Earth Day Birthday, and Fate Destroy is <laughs> playing that night in Orlando at the place called the Ace Cafe. So I mean, it's like they're they've really made a name for themselves. And Blue Ridge, I'm going to just say, probably helped a lot with that. You know, I don't know if the interview necessarily did, but I will say that the you know the fact that they uh, hit Blue Ridge and got to in front of so many new fans. I mean, they put on a great set too. But yeah, like I had a ton of rising talent bands. I interviewed and there were some I unfortunately never got to interview like Matt um, Erie and his band. And I'm really sorry, Matt, we never got to do that. Maybe we'll try to do that this year. Um, it's a, or just at Matt's some point we'll do one. Matt's know. got a new single coming out on Friday. That's so, it. Very cool. Yeah, so very cool. Stay tuned for that. I'm, I'm pretty excited. Yeah, it's like, but it was just, it was so out of the blue and, be, you know, but because of that, I had some bands ask me if they would, you know, if I could come photograph their set, um, Misty Eyed was one of them. And, you know, someone gave me the fair warning that there was going to be a proposal. So that actually happened right at the end of the set. I caught it on video. I don't remember if I got the video over to them. I need to. Wait, I, there was a proposal at their set? Yeah. At their That's set, so the their cute. Set. Oh, oh, I man. love it. With, within the great. band. Yeah. Oh, really? Yes. yes. I believe the guitarist, yep. John. John and, uh, and, and Rebecca. Rebecca. Well, yep. She goes by Megan. Most yes. times. Yeah, he oh, proposed to her right so there on the cute. spot. 
hearts. That's yeah, so it was great. Cute. As, I love as it. they were finishing up their set, and it was it was just awesome. It was that's really adorable. Cool. We, I, 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 I mean, it, 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 like, how he was able to perform his set. <laughs> you know, he was nervous as hell, right? <laughs> right, like you're playing yeah. blue. How could you not? And you're proposing, like that's amazing. That's really yeah. cute. I've I've and seen a lot of videos actually of people like in the crowd proposing to people during Blue Ridge, yes. and it's so cute. Um, but up on stage, like that's amazing. I love that. I didn't know about that. Yeah, that was uh that was probably one of the that happened on. Hang on, when did that happen? Did you get pictures of it, or did you? Um, you the proposal, you no, because I was video recording it at the time when that happened. Ah, that so sucks. I didn't, I didn't get that, but um, I do have the. I got a video of it and just, I mean, they're just, and they're so nice. That's the thing too. It's, you know, such cool people. They're nice people. And it's just, it's great. And they're very talented. Like that yeah. this is a band really that are. I, I can see, you know, making further waves and, and such. And if you, if you never listen to them, go listen to them. Known as Misty eyed and uh, they're yeah, that's solid stuff. Uh, let me see if I could find the, there's this, this is one photo I just absolutely loved. If I could find it. Come on, computer. Can we move a little faster here? Thank you. It's like, no, you're streaming. I'm gonna just crawl <laughs> on you now and just die. It's like you're I'm gonna new. embarrass what you. Well, well, what kicked off the post um at the fan zone was somebody had caught somebody, you know, the proposal in process, took some pictures. You could tell, you know, kind of kind of like creepy lover from the back, like, oh my God, this is so precious. I'm going to take photos. And here we are in March. It was posted to the fan zone. And hey, if anybody knows who they are, tag them kind of thing. And it just created this whole spiral of a conversation. And the number of proposals there, I mean, it's just awesome. It's so cute. It really is. I'm going to go on record as saying, like, I will probably never get married because I can't stand the idea of it. But if I were to ever get proposed to, it better be <laughs> at a show or a festival. <laughs> it better be at a festival. Yeah. Here, wait, I'll, I... <laughs> I'll show the, uh, this is my favorite picture of them that just happened as I was shooting the set night. And as, as I'll say this, <laughs> as a photographer, you cannot ask for a better photo than when something like this happens. Yeah. That's awesome. Which is that, I mean, you just can't, you know, you you know, when you have your subject's attention at that moment and they're pointing you out, I mean, come on. That's a you know. really good photo. I love that picture. Are Absolutely. those are the ones that got engaged? Yes. Oh, oh it's John. So John. That's cute. Megan. Yeah. I mean, I real I mean, I seriously couldn't. I could not have just asked for, you know, a better moment at that time to say, like, holy crud, you know, what yeah, a what a fantastic pic. That it that so, really yeah, they is were a great. great picture. I loved it. Yeah, that was that's like one of those that was worth to me you know shooting that set and you know giving up time for uh you know for other bands i could have shot to do their set so right right it was, it was great it was fun it was absolutely fun so yeah so yeah and, and by the way if you're if anyone knows of anyone that's gonna do you know proposals let me know i'd love to capture one again <laughs> i love capturing the festival ones side you know side message me or something and uh you know if i'm there we'll we'll see what i could squeeze out and see if i can get a capture picture of it Especially if it happens at a set, that's even better. Yeah, so. me message either of us. We'll try to coordinate and, and have enough hands on deck to uh, send somebody out, if nothing else, and see how hands on go. deck. <laughs> so, yeah, well, right. uh, Courtney says Rock does weddings. Yeah, they do that. Yeah, they're always big on that festival to do that. It's like one of their just major things. Yeah, she gets an idea here. Blue Ridge should have a mini chapel in a mosh pit. <laughs> I, I just think there should be a mini chapel. Pick a day, like on Sunday or something, and just like have someone who can, who's a notary, who can actually perform. They have to be out of the state of Virginia, though, to I think to have it legally done, you know. And you just, you know, just can can rank can out. Pit, you just do this. Yeah, yeah. Mosh why not do it in the mosh pit? <laughs> yeah. I mean, even better, mosh pit weddings. On, I love on, it. On, on that note, I've got I've got a call it. I got a dog that's about ready to lose their mind. So. <laughs> Yeah, we should wrap this up. So in any case, um, thank you everyone for attending as normal. Thank you, Danny, for your time. Thank you, Amanda. We appreciate you. Love you both. And uh, we'll, thank you. Appreciate yeah, you we'll all. See, 
We'll see what comes out tomorrow on the band announcements. I haven't heard. Do you know times yet, Amanda, for anything for chance? Um, yes, I do. Hold she does? on. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. You guys, me... you guys are going to get preview times before they get dropped. Something. Sometimes he does. Sometimes he doesn't. Um, She's saying. 10 a.m. <clears throat> tomorrow. Bring it on. 10. All right. So 10 is the first one. Do you, do you have the other two one. yet or no? It's a good one. Uh, no, not quite yet. But not yet. All right. So 10. 10 a.m. is. It's 10 a good it one. Is. I think that people will be pleased. So. All right. All right. Well, keep uh, everyone keep your eyes out. And uh, thank you once again for those who came to join. We appreciate you as always. And uh, we will call it a night and we'll let you everyone know whenever we do the next one. I'm not sure if it'll be Friday night or Saturday afternoon. Um, we'll see where it goes and um, we'll just take it from there. Either way. All right. All right. All right. Take care, everyone. Have a good night. We'll uh, speak to you guys soon. Bye.